One of the things that takes so long about updating the railing, especially if you're doing staining and polyurethaning like I have been, is you just have to wait for paint to dry a lot. So first we, you know, first you have to sand things down, then you have to wipe them off to get the dust off of them, you know, and then let it dry. And you have to put the stain on, and then you have to put the polyurethane on, um, and let the polyurethane dry, and then you have to do, you know, second and third and fourth coats of polyurethane. I mean, it's a, you get an excellent result, though. I really like this look of a beautiful oak wood with the with nice stain and polyurethane on. I think it's a beautiful look. I think it's worth the effort, but it does take time. You have to let things dry. You know, it's kind of cold outside right now, so I've had to clear my garage and lay down a bunch of cardboard here to do the staining and the, the coatings of polyurethane. So I'm just waiting for these top caps to dry, but um, I've got these other pieces ready to go and they're they're looking great I'm, I'm excited about how they turned out i think they're going to look very nice it's going to be a nice contrast with this dark stained oak uh in contrast with the the white balusters we have over here that we're working on so it's going to be a nice look but it does take time so while you're letting the polyurethane or stain dry you got to find other things to do so it's a kind of a lengthy process the, uh, the stain manufacturer recommends that you wait 72 hours before you put polyurethane on it. So I had to stain these all these different railings and top caps and things first, wait for like three days, and then put the polyurethane on. And then the polyurethane manufacturer says you can put two coats of polyurethane on in 24 hours, then you have to wait 24 hours, sand it, and put another couple coats on the next, you know, the next day. So... And even if you have things spaced out perfectly, it could take you, you know, three days for the stain to dry, then two days for the polyurethane to be done. So you're looking at like five days at least, even if you have things timed out perfectly, you have everything ready to go to stain and polyurethane, the fastest it could go if you follow the recommendations of the manufacturer could be about five days or about a week. So it takes some time to get these, this staining done. Um, and the good news is, is this has given me something to do. My neighbor's been helping me build the, uh, the, the the baluster or the uh, end pieces to the to the banister project that um, he's he's really good with the MDF and helping me make the right angle cuts and whatnot. So this is giving me something to do in the meantime while I'm waiting for my neighbor to have time to help me with the rest of the project. So I'm going to put a final coat of polyurethane on these top caps. So those two top caps there. I'm going to be using, I'm going to use uh, just, we have this floor polyurethane that I've used on our wood floor. We still have some of it left. I want to use it up so it's not just drying out in the garage here for months at a time. So I'm going to use up what we have here. This needs to be a good polyurethane. Uh, I'm sure there's probably better products out there. This is just what I have in my garage and it, and it seems to be working quite well. I'm doing at least four coats of it and it's looking, making things look nice. So we'll put a final coat of polyurethane on these top caps. I like using these foam brushes. They just tend to help the polyurethane go on evenly. And if they get ruined from the polyurethane, it's a very inexpensive, you know, 50 cent brush. So I like to take the top cap and start on the bottom. And I know that the bottom's not really gonna be exposed, but there's gonna be a little, maybe quarter of an inch exposed around the edges here. So I'm just gonna put a little cut of it there. And then I'm gonna go around the sides sides of the, the top cap here. Um, I'm just going to thin that out a little bit in the middle too actually. Just try to thin that out a little bit. I don't want a real thick coat on the bottom because I'm going to be flipping this upside down and what happens when you flip polyurethane coated anything upside down it's going to form little drips and that will form little thick areas where the polyurethane is too thick in a little bubble spot as it drips down from gravity pulling it downwards. So I just want a very thin coat on the bottom here. You don't need much. And then go around the sides. You know, ease up some of this to thin this out on this other piece here. Flip this over carefully. And then now the top, I want a nice, even, kind of thick coat of it here. I don't want to thin it out too much, but I don't want it super thick, but I want it thick enough that it's gonna be a little thicker and built up and stronger. I did do a, uh, I have already done three layers of polyurethane and I sanded in between the last layer I did. This is just our fourth coat, probably the final coat I'll do on these. So I'm just getting a nice, even, thick layer. 
And then now that looks even, I'm going to stop brushing it because it looks good. I'm going to make sure these sides are smooth, don't have big blobs of it or don't have thin spots. Kind of go around each side again one more time. There we go. I'm using these little paint drying triangles you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's. They just, you can set stuff on top of them and that way there's only two little points where there's something touching the, the polyurethane or the paint that you're using. Oh, and for the sandpaper in between coats, I used a 400 grit sandpaper, just a really light sand. You don't want to go crazy with the, the in-between sanding step because the water-based polyurethanes, they do recommend that you sand in between coats, but um, it just needs to be a very light sand and you're just trying to remove any little rough edges. You don't need to create scratches for it to stick. I mean, you can we'll do that anyway when you do the sanding. You're just doing the sanding so you get a really smooth finish so that there's Sometimes as this polyurethane dries, there's little particles of dust in the air that settle onto the polyurethane as it dries, and it creates little tiny, you know, rough bumps on in, in within the within the surface of the polyurethane. So when you're sanding it, all you're doing is trying to get rid of those little uh, sand, those little areas of sand or dust that have accumulated on the polyurethane as it dried, and getting rid of those rough surfaces. Um, so that's that's the only reason you're sanding. You don't want to take off your, if you sand too much, you're going to take off your layers of polyurethane that you've already put on. And so you don't want to over sand it. You just want a very light sanding with the really fine grit sandpaper. And it's going to make it kind of look frosty as you do that. It's going to create little micro scratches that you can see. So it kind of makes it look uglier. When you, it kind of made me nervous doing that because I already had a really nice finish after doing two coats of poly. That um, if you, you know, after that, if it looks kind of rough, it kind of makes you nervous, but, it, but then when you put the final coat of polyurethane on, it looks fine. It, those little scratches disappear as the, the new coat of polyurethane fills in those little scratches. So you, you do want to sand in between uh, coat. The, the water-based polyurethane says you can do two coats uh, within 24 hours. You want to wait for the first coat to dry for one to two hours until it's, you know, pretty much dry, but not, you don't want to wait six, because if you wait six hours, then it says you're supposed to sand in between. So you don't want to wait too long, but you don't want to uh, do it while it's still wet either because if you try to put a second coat of polyurethane on while it's still wet, it's just going to smudge and smear and it's uh, you're going to get rid of the glossy smooth finish that you want with polyurethane. So this is a semi-gloss polyurethane. I kind of like the glossy look on the railing and so I use a semi-gloss polyurethane here on the floor and on, on this. So. Now I'm just doing, going around the sides, like I said before, make sure the sides look good, and then get the top nice and evenly coated. Try to eliminate any areas where there's big blobs of polyurethane there. I think we're looking good. Just let that dry. Another hour or two, and maybe I'll put one more coat on. Since those top caps will get a lot of traffic and wear on them, I might put one final fifth coat on it since this is the fourth coat I've done.